the Nimbus Hatchery, located in Gold River, California, raises Chinook salmon and steelhead for release to the American River. The Nimbus Hatchery Visitor Center offers fun and educational activities for children and adults of all ages. At one time, the American River provided approximately 100 miles of stream in which salmon and steelhead could spawn and rear. When the Folsom Nimbus project was completed in 1958, most of the spawning and rearing areas were cut off. Nimbus Hatchery was constructed to replace the salmon and steelhead runs that were blocked by the Nimbus Dam. Salmon and steelhead returned from the ocean to the river of their birth to renew the cycle of life. In the ocean, they found a rich source of food. In the cool running streams of the American River, they found a safe habitat for their young. Fall marks the return of powerful Chinook salmon and the opening of the fish ladder. Winter brings sleek steelhead trout. Throughout the year, you can explore the exhibits of the Visitor Center, stroll the River Discovery Trail, or feed the young fish at Nimbus or the adjacent American River Trout Hatchery. The instinct to swim upstream draws salmon and steelhead to the hatchery from the river by way of the fish ladder. Each step is a small jump for these powerful fish. Water flows in the ladder when conditions are right for spawning, usually early November through March. The gate at the ladder's base is often closed to prevent overcrowding in the holding pond. The hatchery raises rainbow trout and kokanee salmon, which are stocked in over 250 lakes and streams across northern and central California for recreational fishing. This hatchery is funded through the sales of fishing licenses and managed by the California Department of Fish and Game. For over six million years, salmon and steelhead have returned to the California Central Valley. After swimming in the Pacific Ocean, under the Golden Gate Bridge and through the San Francisco Bay, adult salmon swim hundreds of miles up the Sacramento or San Joaquin rivers. Salmon are fish that grow up mostly in saltwater and oceans. When they mature, they migrate or run up freshwater rivers to spawn in what is called the salmon run. There are seven Pacific salmon species and one Atlantic salmon species found in the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans tributaries. Most species are anadromous, meaning they're born in rivers and streams, travel out to sea, and then back to freshwater to spawn. What's really amazing is that salmon return to their birth river to spawn after spending several years at sea. Just how do they do that? Many ideas exist to explain how they can do it. The salmon is said to navigate using the Earth's magnetic field, while others claim they use their keen sense of smell. Changes in habitat and losses to habitat can influence the salmon's capacity to return to their original spawning rivers, putting future salmon generations at risk. Salmon scales are a gleaming silver sheen with pockets of blue, crimson, purple, pink, or green most of the year. But when spawning season is near, the scales change a rainbow of colors. Over their lifespan, salmon can be three diverse colors. For instance, sockeye salmon are light colored and speckled as juveniles. Then they turn silvery blue as adults in the ocean. The adult bodies turn a blazing red and their heads become green when they are ready to spawn. Salmon change color to entice a spawning partner. A female salmon can carry over 4,000 eggs. Between 1,500 to 10,000 eggs can be produced by a female salmon. Only a handful of these eggs, zero to 10, will develop into an adult salmon. Salmon can range in size from three to 126 pounds. The Chinook, also known as king salmon, are the largest. They can sometimes even be six feet long. Salmon devote all their energy to traveling to their home stream, producing eggs and constructing a nest. When salmon return to fresh water, they stop feeding and have no power to return to the ocean after spawning. Other creatures consume them after they die or decay, providing nutrients to the stream. On the other hand, steelhead trout continue to feed in fresh water, and many survive a journey to the sea. These fish can grow for another year before returning to reproduce. Salmon leap or jump their way through waterfalls and rapids. Vertical jumps of up to 12 feet have been reported. 
Consider what it must be like to have this undeniable urge to head for home. You have to walk or run hundreds of miles and you will not eat much, if anything. Would you make it? Most humans couldn't even come close to accomplishing this journey that adult salmon must make, and salmon still have to find the energy to spawn. The Nimbus Fish Hatchery, as well as the Visitor Center, is open Monday through Friday, beginning at 8 a.m. and closing at 3 p.m. On Saturday and Sunday, it opens at 9 a.m. and closes at 3 p.m. as well. At the Visitor Center, you can learn all about the biology of salmon and the hatchery operations. You can even watch egg taking on the spawning deck through the viewing window. Salmon eggs are collected several times a week, usually in the morning, early November through mid-December. Steelhead egg taking occurs once a week, late December through March. It was the first time I had visited since they installed the new fish ladder with the viewing windows. While it seemed like a really good idea, it was difficult to see the fish through the windows either due to condensation or just the lighting. But all in all, it's a really cool place to visit and to get out in nature. There's even a place where you can feed some of the fish.